Well, thank you very much for joining us and making us your preferred choice for everything sports. This is Joy Sports. And of course, this is Sports Today and is only here on Multi TV. And uh, for the next hour and uh, 30 minutes, we bring you everything, all the big stories that are happening within Ghana and the rest of the world. So, right now, it is confirmed. The IU brothers, Andre and Jordan, are on their way back to the Black Stars team. They have confirmed it, and this comes after a crunch meeting with President John Dramani Mahama. So, it took presidential intervention for these young lads to return to the Black Stars teams. There are mixed reactions. Now, 1760 is the text code. You start sending in your text messages. Let's start talking. One part of it is done. The other part is whether Coach Kwesi Apia will use these players or not. Uh, it just looks like it will be a full house for that very crunch tie between Ghana and Zambia in September ahead of the final round of qualifiers for the Brazil 2014 World Cup. So send in your, th your thoughts uh, through uh, 1760. Uh, that is the short code. It will cost you only 30 Ghana pesos as always. It won't pinch you at all. As we look into the return of the Ayu brothers to the Black Stars team and uh, what you make of it. Now also, we'll be telling you about the man Richard Kingston. One of the safest pair of hands that this nation has known when it comes to the senior national team, the Black Stars, having gone to... Two, uh, Ghana's two World Cups, uh, the first one in Germany of, and, of course, uh, that one in South Africa. He says that he's not done yet with his career. He is uh, definitely bouncing back uh, when the next season returns. Uh, he is currently uh, having negotiations with some clubs, and he will make a return. We listen to him. And, of course, what has been happening to Cameroon? The last time we heard of them, Togo had beaten them 2-0 in a World Cup qualifier. Well, one former... Uh, Cameroonian international, uh, Jeremy Injitap, he was in Ghana recently uh, for the Michael Essien Game of Hope and Inspiration, and he's been talking about developments within the team. We'll be telling you about all of that and more stories right here on the Joy Sports channel on Multi TV. You have to keep it right here because you can't go anywhere else for all the big news and the big stories. My name is Nathaniel Atto. I'm ably supported here by the rest of the Joy Sports team. Be my guest over the next one hour and 30 minutes. Remember, the short code has always been 1760, and 1760 it will always be. In a bit, we go to the newspapers and tell you what they have as their main stories. All right, it's time for the newspapers now. And... Um, Obviously, obviously, everybody will be talking about this topic. Kevin Essien Ayu's return for Zambia game, and the story is on the back page. But Nyaho doubts Essien's commitment. Dr. Nyaho Nyaho Tamaklo, a former um, chairman of the Ghana FA, is doubting Michael Essien's commitment. Okay, well, uh, go a bit into that story later on. Oxlade Chamberlain of Arsenal is described as a chip of the old block. He is featured on the Lifestyle page of the Graphic Sports newspaper. And um, Inter Allies uh, secure Premier League spot. And Lesotho are dangerous. Jaula Ade warned. Okay, so let's get inside. Um, and um, in the inner pages, we've got Alex Oxlade Chamberlain. He's uh, a chip of the old block, the Arsenal player. And there's a picture of him and his dad. And there he is featured uh, doing various things, as well as trying to uh, be an aquatic being, sinking himself uh, in a pool of water and looking very, very comfortable there in that shot at the bottom. So that's the lifestyle page of the graphic sports. Now we go into the features, and uh, there is a feature here by Thomas Freeman Yeboah. And um, it says, who is Ghana's top all-time scorer? And um, another view, and uh, this one says that Abedi Pele had 19 goals for Ghana, while Edward Aqua had 30. And uh, all the uh, records are provided there. So this debate will be raging on. Uh, I'm told of a book that has been written by Oheni Jan, which states that um, uh, Edward Aqua obviously was the top scorer, but probably maybe with a higher goal uh, margin than 30. 
So it'll be interesting to read this uh, feature on the features page. Now, from uh, the qualifiers, we bring you some pictures. And there we are. South Africa. After their win, uh, Cameroon over there as well. Togo, remember, beat Cameroon by two goals to nil. So these are the uh, scenes from the uh, World Cup qualifiers that were played around the world. Remember, South Korea is the latest to qualify, and uh, it's more or less the Asian Revolution. They are making it first into uh, the World Cup, and they will start preparing. Japan, remember, both early qualification, and so has South Korea. So the two nations that hosted it in the year 2002 are already there in Brazil 2014. Well... Um, these are scenes from the Michael Essien uh, game of Hope and Inspiration. A big pose for the players. Andrea Yu tries to tackle uh, Florent Maluda. And of course, uh, Emmanuel Shei Adebayo, who was all over the place, is also there. And uh, there's Premier League action as well from... The Dan Soman pitch. And um, there's a, an interesting uh, story here. It says, no hallelujah yet. And um, Kwesiapia seems to be saying that. And uh, he knows that there is a lot of work to be done because of which uh, we just have to take it easy a bit with the celebrations, the early celebrations. Inter allies uh, secure Premier League spot, and of course, uh, Inter allies uh, have made their way into the uh, Premier League. And now we go into uh, what's happening on the international scene. Of course, uh, Jose Mourinho announcing during the week that uh, he wants to be the happy one, and the happy one wants Rooney happy too by turning him into a blue. Okay. Okay, so there we are, our stories on the uh, international page. And of course, uh, on the back page, the former Ghana FA president, uh, Dr. Nyaho Nyaho Tamaklo, and uh, he is doubting uh, the commitment of Michael Essien. So uh, that surely is going to spark a lot of controversy. The tough talking uh, former FA boss there. Now let's uh, take a look at what's inside in the. Um, 90 Minutes newspaper, it says, uh, KP, I'm back for good. There we are. Kevin Prince Boating says he's back for good, and Liverpool close in on Achu. These are some major stories on the front page of the 90 Minutes newspaper. All right, so there we are. And um, take a quick look at the uh, center spread. And it's summer action for... A lot of the players, Kevin Prince, watching, uh, having a good time. So there it is, enjoying all the uh, private time. Not necessarily private, because uh, these pictures are all over the newspapers. Of course, a similar picture is there of Kevin Prince, watching, and his girlfriend. And it says, Chilling Boy Kevin Returns to Stars. And there's an interesting story uh, down at the bottom part of the page. Of course, there is uh, Emmanuel Frimpong, who loves flashy cars, featured there as well. And on the bottom part of the page, you see a picture of uh, the, the mother of Andre and Jordan Ayu, Ma. And she is uh, broken down in tears after her son Andre bought her a Range Rover. There she is uh, cleaning her tears after she received the keys to her new Range Rover vehicle. That surely is a very, very sweet one indeed, isn't it? So, uh, Andrea, you surprised his mom with uh, a Range Rover. Um, you might as well end up doing that as well for your mom. And uh, there we've got pictures and moments of the uh, Game of Hope. Many scenes from there. It surely was a fun moment, and it was live on 
the Joy Sports Channel. Done with the newspapers and we go straight into action. Remember, you can send a text message and we'll be glad to share with everyone else. We go into the details of that story of how President John Dramani Mahama, uh, you know, intervened at the last moment and said, guys, you need to come and play for the national team. Well, that advice has been respectfully uh, heeded to and of course the players are back. They have announced the return. So Andre and Jordan are available for selection by Coach Kwesi Apia. Of course, there are varied, uh, you know, reactions to all of this, but, 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 well, what do you out there make of it? 1760 is a text code. Uh, send a text message and let's share with everyone else. Uh, let's take a look at how things went um, with uh, Andre de Diayu and his brother Jordan agreeing to uh, call off that temporary retirement from the Black Stars team. I'd like to use this opportunity to thank the president as father of the nation knowing that football is very dear to the hearts of this nation and with the objective of ensuring that we get all our best players on board for the World Cup both the qualifiers and the tournament itself. A lot of uh, discussions have been going on behind the scenes and uh, the president himself has intervened and uh, I'm happy to announce that based on mutual discussions and fruitful discussions uh, between uh, His Excellency the President, uh, you brothers, the FA and myself, we've been able to uh, come to a consensus and so uh, you will hear those speak for themselves. It's a presidential intervention, you know, that when the president was in France, he met with them and had discussions with them, listened to their concerns. And as a father, he got us and the FA also involved and brought us all together to look at um, whatever issues there are. And the important thing is that we put the past behind us and look forward to what is ahead of us as a country, preparing for the World Cup and ensuring that we make a mark at the World Cup. As a... My uncle said, the Minister of Sports, I would like to thank um, the Father of the Nation, uh, His Excellency, uh, the President, for this intervention and for all what he has done for, for the Ghanaian football spirit and Ghanaian football lovers. I think um, today uh, is a great day for, for everybody and um, yes, we, we, we are announcing our return to the national team or national return back to the Ghana Black Stars everything has been settled we have a, a discussion a lot of things have been said everything has been have been wiped off so now we we are here to give a hundred percent for our country as we always did try and do everything to qualify Ghana to the World Cup try everything to win trophies for the country as, as I did before in the past with the under 20s and hopefully uh, things will who will be okay. Now everything is okay and uh, hopefully things with the, the Ghana Federation also too will be better. We, we cannot play football with conditions. You know, we cannot play football with conditions. You play football with your heart, especially when it's for your country. Um, I think every Ghanaian and everybody knows that, whether it's me personally or my whole family, or any player that wears the Ghana jersey gives his best for the country. So I think uh, there are no conditions. It's just that... Um, we just look for the best for our nation, that's all. It's not me to, to, to see that. It's for my fellow brothers, my fellow seniors, my fellow juniors to, to see. But the only thing we can say is that we are back to do everything and let Ghana get to the World Cup. Well, a trendy young uh, dude, he says that he is returning to the Black Stars team. I'm sure that you've already started picking your phones already. Let's get talking and let's get going, uh, you know, uh, on this subject. Uh, the IU brothers returning to the Black Stars and um, uh, surely uh, an, uh, an interesting development there. Uh, you know, uh, this is something that has happened with many players in the Black Stars team. And uh, this uh, was a subject of worry for a very long time. And, of course, at this moment, it looks like uh, Ghana surely is going to have a full house. Um, uh, obviously, after Kevin Prince Boating also comes out uh, to vocalize uh, his decision to, his apparent decision to uh, play and wear the Ghana jersey again. But there are discussions beyond that. There are reactions beyond that. I want you out there to tell me what you make of this new decision. And uh, the other question we're asking is, uh, when will Kwesi Apia use the IU brothers?
That's another very big question uh, that we need to answer. Now, one person who's been consistent in the Black Star scene uh, for a very long time, but you know, has taken a back burner for now, is goalkeeper Richard Kingston. Richard Kingston was part of the uh, you know array of stars who played at the uh, at the uh, Michael Essien Game of Hope, and of course he has been talking about his career and uh, what's been happening with him uh, since he you know took the uh, back burner and uh, has been in the background. Everybody's been wondering what's been happening with him. Well, Joy Sports caught up with him at the stadium, and uh, he's been talking about uh, his career and uh, you know plans for progress. And you know he says that he's not done yet. Don't be surprised if he just uh, gets a club and gets a call-up again into the Black Stars team. Where have you been? Ghanaians haven't seen you in a while. Yeah, I'm in the country. Yeah. Um, doing what? Yeah, uh, I'm training. You know, uh, I have uh, a personal coach, goalkeeper's trainer. So uh, I am training. I'm training hard, you know. Do you still have um, ambition to play for any of the big clubs in Europe or um, you're looking to get a club in Ghana? Uh, of course, I, I want to play and I want to play in Europe for Ghana. Now, no, um, my ambition to play in Europe and my uh, agent is also working hard to get one of the clubs in Europe. Um, has, has he told you of uh, any club that, that are spoken to him? Yeah, he told me many clubs are interested in me, so we are working together and see uh, what God has for me. There was a story that um, Kumasi Asante Kotoko wanted to secure your services. Did you hear that story? Yes, but it wasn't true. Uh, they twisted uh, my statement. Uh, the question was, uh, if you retired, what club do you want to play in Ghana, and I said I prefer to play in. Uh, I, I prefer to play for Kumasi Asante Kotoko if Accra Great Olympics is not in the Premier League. So that was the statement I made last time. Well, you, you, like you said, you are training and uh, you are looking at your agent getting your club. But um, as far as the Black Stars is concerned, um, do you still think that uh, you have what it takes to be the Black Stars goalkeeper? There is a lot of competition there. Uh, of course, so far as uh, I am still training and I, I, I see myself that I am still active, but now I'm just waiting for a club, then I can think next for uh, Mother Ghana. Um, the, 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 the new season in Europe is going to start, so you have up to the 31st of August to get a club. Do you think you can get a club before that time? Uh, I hope so, because uh, I believe in God and I, I have faith. Uh, because uh, I know I know only God who can get me in a club, and if uh, it didn't, it's still the Lord, and if He gets it for me, it's still the Lord. Let's look at your club, Accra Great Olympics. Um, things are not really going on well for them at all. What, what, what do you think is happening to Great Olympics? Uh, I think by my experience, what I can say is uh, the organization is not quite well. They need to uh, get at yourself very well. They need to have good concentration. They need to have uh, one ambition so that they can lift Olympics from where it is now. And what about the people who run the club, Fred Papo and his people? Do you think they are the right people for the job? I think I have worked with uh, Fred Papu since when I was in Olympics. And I, we worked together in uh, Blasters for about six to seven years. Uh, he's a good man who knows football. So I believe if he gather in several way and gather the people he think they can help him to uh, lift Olympics up, I believe he, he can do it. What, what about your brother? Have you been following his career, Lai? Yeah, uh, I... Uh, I I have I have spoken to him last week. He is still interest he's still interested to play, and he also working for uh, towards uh, the next season in Europe. So I wish him where to. I pray for him every time, for God Almighty also to intervene for his career. Finally, um, how is the family doing, Madam and the children? Are they fine? They are very well. Uh, my children are here. They are watching me. They, uh, I think today will be the happiest day in their lives because about uh, two years now I haven't played 
uh, like this and today is a good opportunity for me to show myself once again to my family especially to make them happy that uh, they, they were always watching me at training in my house so I think their wishes has come true today You only heard it here on uh, Sports Today on the Joy Sports Channel on Multi TV. Uh, we go ahead, we bring you some more stories. And uh, another player who's uh, not been in the Black Stars in one or two or three matches is uh, the man John Paintel. Remember that he was rocked with uh, some domestic violence issues recently. But uh, the player uh, appeared at the Michaelisian Game of Hope. And uh, he has also been talking about career, about family life, and uh, the way forward. Remember, he uh, is not anymore with the club, uh, you know, Hapoel Tel Aviv in Israel. And now he is a free agent and will be looking forward to playing for another club in the coming season. Uh, he's been talking to Joy Sports as well. Great honor to be part of uh, this event, and I think this is the second time uh, being invited to uh, help my colleague Michael Asian, and I'm very, very happy and proud to be <laughs> to be one of the the guys who's going to represent uh, the game to be played on. And this is some of the things that um, everyone is expecting uh, from us, we the stars. I, th I think to give what the society has given us, to give it to them back. So what my brother is doing is, I mean, it's achievable. It's, it's great to see a smile on your face again. You've been through so much in the last 12 months. Personally, how are you now? I'm well, by the, by the grace of God. Um, I'm kicking and all is well. Uh, how is the family now? Is everything settled? Is everything okay? The family is doing well and I'm happy that uh, my family is because they are, they are my pride and they are most important thing in my life. And, and how, how is your career going now? Are you still going to be staying in Israel or you're going to be finding your way somewhere else? Yeah, I still have uh, one, one uh, season with the uh, Israeli club, Apoel Tel Aviv, but uh, I'm thinking of moving forward um, back to Europe. Oh, we will see what, what will happen. My agent is still working hard, and I think a few years we need to hit well, well and then also end it one. Has he mentioned any particular clubs to you? Um, it's too early to disclose, so uh, we are waiting for uh, the best offer and then also a good club that we can see in the public eye. Uh, John Paintel there, uh, he's been talking about uh, his career and uh, the way moving forward. Now, uh, he is also uh, getting ready and, you know, getting himself uh, in shape so that he can return to full-time action. Remember, one of the most dedicated players in the Black Stars in the last 10 years, uh, somebody who uh, started off from the uh, juvenile level, uh, playing on the Under-20 World Cup in 2001 with the likes of Michael Essien, John Mensah, Sule Ali, Montari, and all, and finally finding him way himself uh, there into the Black Stars team as a key, key uh, defender. One other a person who is now retired uh, but has been contributing a lot in terms of punditry um, in international football is uh, Samuel Oseiko for Joy Sports. Also caught up with him uh, for his thoughts. The whole Germans are happy and me, myself, I was really, really, really happy for Bayern Munich. Let's come home. You played at the World Cup in 2006. What do you make of the current Black Stars team? Are they as good as the team you played in in 2006? I think it's a different generation. You can't compare. And when we compare, we compare from Polo time, Razako, Pukofri, and then we can go also back to Sekofi and them. You know, Ghana is the country that produces a lot of talent. And we shouldn't just um, think about this generation was better than this and this. Yeah. So far as uh, the older generation didn't go to the World Cup, and our time we went to the World Cup, it doesn't mean we are better than them. They also won four times African Cup of Nations. Don't get me wrong, you know. So it's a different balance, and we have to just be glad that we have such people who have so much talent. Well, so that's Samuel Osei Kufo there, and uh, he has been talking about paying a lot of respect to the generations before uh, him. Also, uh, one of the few most decorated players on the African continent, uh, having won the uh, UEFA Champions League, uh, the German Bundesliga, the Super Cup, and uh, many other uh, trophies. Uh, very, very well decorated here on the African continent. Uh, now contributing a lot to uh, football punditry. 
uh, in the international media. Uh, now another player whom you haven't heard from in a very long time is Hamza Mohamed, one player who's played in every level when it comes to the national teams, from the juvenile all the way to the senior team. Uh, he's been talking about uh, time off the field, and he's been also talking about uh, his career and uh, a couple of other things. I finished my contract over there. I decided to pursue an administration course. I uh, wish I did for two years. Um, I'm here doing a distance one. Uh, I'll graduate next year. Are you saying that uh, you're no longer in the football fraternity? Uh, not at all. I'm concentrating on the education now. Uh, if I graduate, definitely I'll come back at least for a year or two. So uh, between now and when you're going to be graduating, what would you be doing? Uh, I'm still learning. Uh, maybe I'm training with a club. Just to keep myself in good shape, in case I finish, then I'll be in a top form to maybe pursue my career. I, I am looking at uh, your body language, and you, you still look very fit and very fine to you know, continue playing at their highest level. Why would you want to curtail it at this point? Uh, it's because of the education, as I said earlier on. Uh, just since I'm graduating next year, I'll just be patient and finish it and then come back. As I said, maybe a year or two will be okay. Before what exactly are you studying in school, Charlie, if I may ask? Football administration, please. And uh, where exactly in Australia? Melbourne. What would you want to become after studying um, to become a football administrator? Uh, yeah, uh, just to be a football administrator. Um, you know, we're having problem with RCU. Maybe uh, we'll go and join hands to the old ones as well, bring the team up. Yeah, exactly that's what I want to do. You had the opportunity of playing for the Black Stars. Um, what do you make of the, the team as we speak? They are not doing bad. Um, I'm not just being happy with about one or two players out now. I just hope the administrator will talk to them. Then we need a unified team so that we can sort of make it all we'll make it to the World Cup in 2014. Now, what, what about Coach Kwesi Apia? He's not doing bad. He's doing wonderfully. He's doing wonderfully. Think that we have a team good enough to win the World Cup or even qualify for the World Cup? Sorry, uh, I think we can qualify. Uh, I think we can qualify. We have a very good team. I just hope those that they have a beef with will come together and then we we'll have a unified team and then we can make it as we've been doing. Well, 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 you heard it from the man, uh, Hamza Mohammed, uh, one very, very key player for all the national teams in times past. He's now focusing on contributing to the game from the administrative tables. You heard it right there. You send in a text message, 1760 in a bit. We'll be sharing uh, loads of them uh, with you here on the show. We continue to do some more, and uh, the man, Mubarak Wakasu, is attracting interest from many other, uh, you know, clubs. And, I mean, this is the season when you get all the big stories flying around. Uh, some of them have uh, little bits of fact. But, well, uh, he has been linked with a move to Giants Barcelona in the... Uh, Spanish La Liga, and this is according to media reports in Spain. Well, uh, Mubarak Wakaso has been exceptional for Espanol, and of course, uh, you would always remember some of the little, little downsides with him, you know, uh, receiving uh, red cards and suspensions and all. Well, uh, Mubarak Wakaso, uh, he uh, is getting a lot of interest from other clubs aside Espanol, and uh, it's very, very unclear whether he will stay at Espanol in the coming season. Also, uh, the goalkeeper, Fatal Dada, the Black Stars' current uh, number one goalie, is also uh, supposedly being uh, pursued and monitored very closely by um, Orlando Pirates. And uh, the chief executive of Ashanti Gold Football Club is uh, expected to meet with Orlando Pirates today in Johannesburg to open talks over signing goalkeeper Fatal Dada. And uh, the Ghana goalie impressed a great deal in South Africa when the Black Stars finished in fourth place at the Africa Cup of Nations. And so to go or not to go, Fatal Dauda, uh, he will be a major subject for discussion later today. We'll be bringing you updates on uh, how well uh, the discussions go uh, with uh, Orlando Pirates in the South African Premier League as they get ready for another season, the 2013-2014 season. We do some more and we bring you, uh, you know, news on Awal Mohamed. And Awal Mohamed is also playing in South Africa. Well, Maritzburg United have refused to sell the player and... Um, he is uh, yet to really, really hit top form at the South African Premier League side, but uh, they have insisted that the Ghanaian defender, Awa Mohamed, will not be sold. 
in the off season, despite being linked with uh, several uh, clubs. Also, we go to another player who was uh, here on the local scene and was doing very well. His name is Samuel Tre. Now, Samuel Tre um, is preparing to debut uh, in Europe. And uh, he will be playing in the UEFA Champions League qualifiers with uh, FC Chirac. All right, so we go to uh, Ghana FA President Kwesi Nyantechi, and he is built to address uh, a Soccer X uh, conference uh, soon. And uh, the FA President will be uh, one main speaker at the uh, Soccer X uh, African Forum in Durban from October 1 to October 2. And this is uh, aimed at discussing various uh, developments within football and finding solutions to the problems that be that confront the sport on a daily basis and um, there's a, a development within King Faisal Football Club and they uh, have been staying away from uh, some events that occurred at the Tema Stadium which led to coach Malam Yaya being accused of collecting a bribe of 3,000 Ghana CDs to uh, let uh, the game go. Now, in final days in the local Premier League, uh, many of such allegations and stories uh, come um, out, and uh, King Faisal, the club itself, has uh, distanced itself from all of these uh, allegations against uh, the head coach. So, uh, there will be still be more developments on this matter where there are uh, allegations of bribery in the local Premier League. We'll be doing some more on uh, this story. And uh, unfortunate news for some of the clubs, uh, the headline sponsor Globacom is said to be owing uh, some of the uh, Premier League clubs. Now, so uh, we will be reaching officials of GLOW in subsequent editions of the show uh, for bigger clarification on this matter on uh, sponsorship and uh, which uh, clubs uh, exactly are yet to get uh, their, their bit of the sponsorship uh, uh, money. Now let's go ahead and uh, Coach Stephen Abugri, who is very well remembered for bringing King Faisal from relegation into the Premier League, has resigned as coach of Oko United after failing to guide them uh, similarly to secure promotion to the Ghana Premier League. Remember that, uh, you know, Oko United were uh, rendered victims uh, together with the likes of FC Nanya, um, in the playoffs by Inter Allies, who, you know, recorded a 100% record in the uh, Premiership playoffs to record a ticket to get uh, into the uh, Ghana Premier League. So there it is. Uh, Stephen Abugri now has resigned after that attempt to replicate the feat he chalked with uh, King Faisal some two seasons ago. Now, uh, Inter Allies, after that very, very important, important uh, win and uh, promotion to the Premier League, uh, have been meeting the media and have been talking about progressing and uh, plans to make the team uh, a good uh, side worth its call. And uh, this was at a media launch uh, and a media briefing after qualification uh, by the Accra Bay side. Team qualify for the Premiership. Yesterday, really, yesterday was the happiest day in my life. I never see this kind of victory when I, since I start football. This is from in the northern region, Upper West. And because of football now, everybody wants to see me. This Yesterday was my happiest day in my life, sure, to tell you. Yes, when we start the league, the first round we lose only two games. The second round we haven't lost any game. From the second round, our friendly matches, the second round, seven matches, we haven't lost. Our best is, the West is draw. Then we are having confidence to, when we go to the middle league, our money men were doubting us that whether we, we can qualify to the premiership because it was our first time of qualifying. Then I assure them that me and my boys, we are eager to qualify the team to the premiership. He said, if we didn't qualify, he will hold us responsible. I said, don't worry. Determination, we can qualify with God all things are possible. 
I'm very great because it it became it it was it wasn't easy and it came with a lot of hard work and determination with unity and everything we put everything together because we wanted to be in the premier for the first time in our club history yes i'm very proud and i must say that uh, it has come with a lot of um, hard work dedication discipline and teamwork from both management the technical team and then the playing body it's not been easy in fact we had a lot of challenges but with the belief we had that we can make it we have done it i'm so proud from a technical point of view, what do you think made a difference for your team? Well, um, we took all the four cardinal points in football. Our fitness, the psychology of the players, their technical ability and their tactical ability. And we took into consideration the teams that we're going to play. We had to, you know, you had to, before you play any team, you need to know their strengths and weaknesses. Bearing in mind your strengths and weaknesses, it makes you plan a strategy to overcome them. And that's what we did in every game. And in every game that we played was different. And I'm so happy that the boys also played to instructions and they played with a lot of determination. That was the word, determination. You can see them being small and being pushed over. But at the end of the day, they stand tall. And I'm so proud of them. He said it's a very long road. We came a long way since '96 when we were established. We fought hard to qualify to Division One. We stay in Division One for five years, and then uh, we see the need to take a step further to the elite division because we realize that players who groom over three years have reached really a stage that the league in which they are playing in is has become too small for them. They need a stage, a stage where they can market themselves. And if you look at it, the only stage that you can market yourself in Ghana is the Premier Division, where they have access to the media, the games are on TV, and it's easier to market and project your team as well. So it is based on that we said, no, the time has come for us to take a step. And uh, by His grace, God being with us, we were able to take that step, that bold step. That's why we are here today. To be honest, the teams that we played against in uh, the uh, Middle League, that is uh, Nanya, Oko, Oko, Oko United and Dambot, the toughest match was Oko United. They came with a lot of fans, in close to thousands, but our team is a young team, but they were able to hold their grounds. They took the game to the opponent and they excel at the end of the day. It is the play pattern that, that helps us. And again, I must be thankful to uh, managers of Thema Stadium. That pitch has contributed a lot to the development of our game. Uh, you know, the style we have, the flair, you play the ball around your opponent, they get tired and then you take advantage. You know, scoring goal is difficult, but the best weapon is make your opponent weak. And if you're fortunate, you, you, you score goals. So Thema Pitch has been one of the major factors that we have been able to take reach this far. And uh, looking at Nania, Nania was a good team, but we have a lot of luck on our side. Dambo's match was more difficult also. It's also difficult because we need to change a venue. You know, some of these boys are so young, we need parental consent to even take them to Kumasi. These boys have not traveled beyond 200 kilometers. And to take them beyond 200 kilometers, some of them we need parental consent. And I want to take this opportunity to thank their parents for giving us that, uh, giving them that respect and permitting their awards to go with us to uh, Kumasi and Ubuasi to in our quest to qualify, which we've done. The qualification means we thank them. If we didn't qualify, they might be disappointed. They will not see the reason why they permitted their players to go, their, their children to go. So that this qualification is a salute to them. It's a way of which saying thank you to them. Allies, they are in the Ghana Premier League. Let's see what they're able to do. Uh, remember that uh, sometime last season, by this time, we were talking a lot to, uh, you know, Ahmed Gambo and uh, his side, Amidas Professionals from Tema, and they said they were going to create, uh, you know, a lot of trouble. They stared a lot of trouble. They created problems for some of the teams in the Premier League. Let's see what Inter Allies are able to do. Uh, you had uh, the likes of De La Sena, a money member of the the club inter allies and they've been there for a very long time they say now the division one league is too small for them they need
premiership exposure. Well, congratulations one more time to Inter Allies. Now we do some of your text messages that have been coming in. This one says, uh, the comeback of the IU brothers is a right step in the right direction for Ghana uh, football. This is from Adams Alassan, Awatara, Ghana Customs, Hohoi. Thank you very much for that text message. We need Essien Prince, Dramani, Mensa, and even appear in the Black Stars. If not, we will be trophyless here in Ghana. This is from Smart in Chiriponi. Thank you very much. The return of these prodigal sons will create problems in the Black Stars team. This is from Ralph in Sunyani. We thank the president for his timely intervention and may God bless the IU brothers and their father from Coach Adolf. Thank you very much. Who is in charge of inviting the players to the Black Stars? Is this the president or the coach from Tony and Nua Shongman? Well, let me just uh, bring uh, you know, a bit of perspective into this. The president just intervened to convince the players to rescind their decision to play for the Black Stars. Uh, the ultimate responsibility to uh, who is wearing the jersey and is playing on the pitch lies with uh, Coach Kwesiapia, the head coach. Now, this one from, um, sent from Malam in Nkoko. Uh, Malam. So this one from Nkoko says, I don't agree with the president to talk to the players to come back. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm happy that the guys are back to the Black Stars team. This is from Oscar A. in Keta. Thank you very much, Oscar, for that text message. We're expecting some more, which we'll be sharing with you. Remember, it's 1760. 1760 is the text code, and um, we will be glad to have your comments on uh, the return of the IU brothers to the Black Stars team. Of course, whether or not they get to play proper is another subject for another day. Right now, we focus on the just-ended Cowbell uh, National Bike Tour. And, of course, uh, we had a chat recently with um, Kwabena Asama, who's in charge of communications at Cowbell, the headline sponsor for the tour. And uh, he's been talking about the success story, the very, very big success story that has been told with this tour. Um, excitement, a lot of action, and like you said, Prosper will triumph over everybody after 13 grueling stages. It's been good, Nat. It's been a huge improvement. Well, I mean, there, there were, like you said, there were lots of fans. People turned out to cheer, and it was exciting to see that people remembered the tour from last year. And um, by the time we were in the fourth or fifth stage, most of the people had on their lips Samuel and him. I and see. he had become one of the most popular names on the tour. Um, I keep saying that he's the most popular cyclist, in my opinion, now. But you could tell that people were following it, courtesy of the likes of multi-TV. And you could tell that people knew what was going on. And people kept on saying, the cycling people are coming. And then people would ask, where are you coming from today? Where are you heading to? And where are you ending? Wow, these guys, are they riding all that way? And, you know, you could tell that people were realizing that these are very great athletes. So for us, it's a huge moving forward from last year. Um, there's a huge awareness that's been created this year, and we are very, very happy to go international next year and see what that holds. Mm. Well, it is, but not, not. I mean, if you look at the kind of work that these guys have done over two weeks, um, we really wish we could give him more than that. And I guess in the years to come, we'll be looking to, every year we have tried to increase the prize money, we'll be looking to do that. This is a once-in-a-year competition. We should be able to take it to a certain level. Um, because if you see the level of athleticism that, athleticism that these guys display, it's amazing. And they have to train the entire year for this kind of competition. You're doing a total of about 1,000 kilometers through rain, through sunshine, hills, valleys. It's not easy. I see. Uh, tell me about rain. I mean, and how the cyclists cope with it. Because we, we surely had a period where there's a lot of rain. Surprisingly, we didn't have rain on any of the stages until we got to the mountains. And the day that the guys had to do the steepest climb up the Manfi Hills and then down back to Kufuridia, that was when the rain struck. And um, it made it that bit more precarious. Um, but these guys were amazing. They stood up to the test. They rode much faster than they rode last year. There was a lot of aggression on that stage. So I dare say that the rain treated us well. Um, we managed to avoid it largely, apart from that one stage at Kufuridia. But the rain is part of cycling. It adds to the cycling. It adds an extra dimension. And anybody who calls himself a professional cyclist ought to be ready to go through the rain in the tour. And also, I'm sure that after all of this, after recording such major successes over the years, and, you know, making major improvements year in, year out. There's the temptation to want to organize it twice a year. I mean, haven't you heard people along the streets and all over the, the towns that you've gone through uh, say to you that, look, we want to see this twice a year? Well, those calls have come. What the Federation, I know, is looking at closely, and we will be working with them because something we're interested in as well, is to have other races aside of the tour in the course of the year. 
possibly have a race every quarter. Look at different cities, maybe Accra, Kumasi, etc., Tamale, wherever. Have a few races in the course of the year that can help the guys build up to the tour. But a tour like this, you want to have just one in the year. Um, the kind of logistics it demands, etc. But we can have many other cycling competitions. Some years ago, we used to have a cycling league, which fizzled out. We're looking at the possibility of bringing that back. But all these will come together to keep the guys in shape as they get ready for the tour in the year. Well, definitely. I mean, the organizations we worked with, um, first I'd like to mention Pens and Plastics, makers of big pens and shavers. They've been fantastic. They were with us all the way, one of our corporate sponsors. Um, then we have the Cycling Federation itself, which has worked very tirelessly on this one. The Sports Authority has been of a lot of help. Um, the Ministry of Youth and Sports. And then, of course, we have the media organizations, especially, especially multimedia. Multimedia group, multi-TV, Joy FM, Adum FM, Asempa FM. They followed, gave a minute-by-minute minute report. For the first time, we had live coverage of the starts, the races, and the finish courtesy of multi-TV. So without these guys, we couldn't have done it. Without these organizations, we couldn't have done it. Um, we have also DDP and Global Outdoor who assisted us with billboards. So I always say that if you look at the plethora of organizations that support this tour, there is a lot of hope for cycling. If we can gather these kinds of organizations to support cycling on the tour, three years into the tour, then for us there's a lot of hope. And we're looking forward to having even more organizations on board next year as we go international. Well, so you heard it. Uh, Kwabna Samwa saying that it surely is going to be more. We're going to be seeing more doses of cycling for our consumption um, during the year. And uh, to the team, we say congratulations uh, to Joy Sports as well, uh, the team on the ground, bringing all of you out there, every single stage of the tour, live on television. Never really been done before, and uh, we pride ourselves in that as partners of uh, Cowbell, who are continuously, continuously, uh, you know, devoted to supporting uh, sports that do not receive uh, big amounts of funding like football does. So, Kobe, thank you very much for your time here. Much, and uh, I'm looking forward to that race. Let's begin it from Accra. Maybe we might get both of us to ride. Hey. No, but I, I'm surely going to be faster than you are. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, thank you also for staying tuned. It's a wrap. Well, 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 that was a chat I had earlier with uh, Kwabna Sama, who's in charge of communications at Promacido, producers of Cow Bell. Okay, I keep your text messages coming in. 1760. It will cost you only 30 Ghana pesos. Let's do some more here. And uh, the Ghana Amateur Boxing Federation will hold uh, a competition. Remember, the Ghana Amateur Boxing uh, Federation is staging the individual championships for 2013. From Monday, June 17 to June 22, and uh, this will be at the Bridge Boxing Gym in Accra. These are all part of efforts to get, uh, you know, some of the best uh, faces and the best uh, boxers to join the national team. And this is a process which starts ahead of the national championships as well. So uh, the Ghana Amateur Boxing Federation will host this championship. We'll be bringing it to you every single moment of it right here on the Joy Sports Channel on Multi TV. We do some football, some more football now, and um, this one is uh, on Jeremy Injitapa. He is the man uh, in the center of uh, the focus now, and we are looking at uh, what's happening within Cameroon. And, uh, you know, recently it's not been too good for the Indomitable Lions, and, uh, you know, the man, uh, Jeremy Injitapa, who was in Ghana recently, has also been talking about development within uh, Cameroonian football. The way I run, I'm retired. There's no doubt of that. He, he, I know he's not official, but uh, I'm not in active, I'm not playing anymore. Uh, I quit in 2011. Oh yeah, 2000 no 2000 yes uh, 2010 2011. So it's a long time ago. So what are you doing now? Well, enjoy with my family. You know, that's uh, the biggest the biggest things because uh, footballers. They are always in the hotel or inside the plane. So now I can enjoy with my with my kids and my wife. And then after, take good times. Let's look at the Cameroonian national team. You have a new coach, uh, Volker Finka. Yes. Um, do you know anything about him? Uh, well, um, like uh, like most of our our fans, our people. We know him from the medias, 
So we got uh, the CV. Now we heard that uh, they have a good CV. So we will uh, we will see. We just wish him, me as a footballer, I just wish him all the best to help uh, my teams to qualify because we miss we miss tournament. If you see the last two World National Cup, we did not qualify. So we are, we will pray. We will pray that he will uh, he will have a success with, with our teams. There, there seems to be reading from the newspapers and from the internet. There seems to be a lot of problems in the Cameroonian national team. We don't know because we don't live in Cameroon. Well, because but, uh, what, what exactly is the problem? Well, uh, because uh, you know, fans or those who like footballs, when there is not result, obviously they will complain. But uh, they forget that. Uh, Everywhere, I mean, every nation had some good times and bad uh, times. I can name uh, Spain. If we see Spain today on top of the uh, FIFA ranking, because uh, that's their times. But if you look uh, seven, six years before, they were not there. So that's, that is my point, because I know what is football. If you see Brazil, it is the same. You know, in Africa, football, football now is like a religion. And we, all, we just, our people like, like football. So when there's, a, there's not, that's what makes them happy. Forget uh, sickness, hungry, many things. So that's, I understand why they are not happy but it is a message for the for the footballers to work hard to try to win matches to make these people who love football happy that's the only gift we can we can give to them beyond the footballers even at the administration level there's a lot of fighting at the cameroonian yes. uh, federation fekafoot yes. um, last week there was supposed to be an election i don't even know whether the election came yes. on but what is the problem with fekafoot as I said, this thing came from from the result. You know, when you see, when you look uh, two, three, year, four years before, this problem was not was not there. This is, I think, the main thing. It is the result. Now, criticism. We understand. You know, every every person who can understand, who can. Who can understand or we can like to be criticized, criticized will always go forward. So I can say it is a result, and we are there. We are trying to find a solution to to bring to bring up uh, our football in the top level. Well, big big uh, issues with uh, Cameroonian football and the election that was just talked about in the interview with Kwame Jumajiman of Joy Sports. Well. That uh, election has been uh, postponed one more time. So it just looks like the turbulence within, uh, you know, uh, the Cameroonian Football Federation is just not over. Well, so there is another proposal to hold the elections on June 19. And this is um, one thing that surely, surely will be a big problem that will run on. And, of course, another player who... Uh, Joy Sports has been speaking with uh, is Emmanuel Ebue. Emmanuel Ebue was also in town recently, and uh, Joy Sports caught up with him for a chat about football. Tell me, how happy are you to be in Ghana? You know, as I said before, Ghana is my second country, so I love to always uh, come here. And then um, I say thanks to the Ghanaian people to always uh, make me happy when I come here in, uh, in, in Ghana. Ghanaians and Africans watch you guys on TV and we are always happy to see you. What, what do you make of uh, the African game and uh, the African players who play their football in Europe? You know, for us, you know, it's uh, very, very important to come back in, uh, in our country to make uh, some people uh, happy. Because as you said, uh, some people will, will, will never see us like this. You know, it's only in the TV. So it's very, very important for, new, uh, for us sometimes to come to show how a beautiful face to, <laughs> to some uh, African people, you know. That's why we are here today. We want them to come a lot uh, in the stadium tonight to support uh, Michael Essen Foundation. Because of that, we are here. 
Let's do a bit about your club career. You moved from Arsenal to Galatasaray. How is it in Turkey? I left Arsenal to go to Galatasaray. On God, on God knows why. But I am feel uh, comfortable and feel more happy where I am now. So I always pray God to always give me uh, a healthy to, to, to always give uh, my best on the pitch uh, and uh, to make my fans uh, happy. You won the league in Turkey this year. You must be very happy with that. Yeah, of course. You know, when you play football and then we don't win anything, that's no good, you know. So I say thanks to God to give me that chance to win uh, two times uh, that uh, title. Yeah. Finally, let's look at the Ivory Coast team. It's a very strong team, and getting a call up from Lamucci can be very difficult for every player. Drogba has been dropped recently. How is he doing? Me, I always pray for my country. I pray to bring a one day cup in, uh, in our country because everybody is waiting for that. And then, uh, as I said, only God knows why uh, we can't bring the cup in our country at the moment. But um, I always uh, believe in ourselves. I believe. If uh, we don't take, maybe we are another generation we can't take, you know. So we are patient. We always uh, give our best when we play. We are not joking the pitch. And then uh, the coach knows why you didn't call uh, Drogba or me or some players. You know, he knows why, you know. So it's not because uh, we didn't go to play. And then we're going to think bad about uh, our, our national team. No, 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 no. Me, I'm positive. I believe in God. I love everybody. That's why they call me Emmanuel. Because Emmanuel in the Bible means God be with us, you know. So I wish them the best. I want God to give them uh, the success. Well, so that was Emmanuel Eboe. Now, there's a text message here that says, Why did the president not ask Quincy Apia to bring Quincy Owusu Abeye? He is fit and playing. What has he done wrong to Ghana? K in Nungwa is asking that question. Well, nobody will really know. They are not the only players in Ghana, so let them go, especially Kevin. This is from Maxwell and Dunkwa Onofin. Players who refuse to play uh, the qualifiers should be refused to uh, play at the World Cup from Wafayao in uh, Kokumpe in Takradi. Now, I think it's time for SN Kevin and you and Uswa Beye and Stephen Apia to join the Black Stars now so we can win all the time, all the best to the Black Stars. Why are you brothers? Confusion will start in the Black Stars camp. Leave them out, please. And this is from KJ. Varied reactions coming on the back of the announcement by the IU brothers to rescind their decision to uh, temporarily quit Ghana. Ghana is a senior national team. Uh, now there is a development within Egyptian football. Well, uh, the great uh, Mido, Mido has uh, retired from uh, football. And uh, he announced this on his... Uh, page on Twitter. And uh, he now is um, hanging his boots. We live to see whether he will maybe probably go into coaching like the likes of uh, Hassan Shehata, who eventually uh, also won big, big uh, laurels with uh, uh, Egypt and with his club as a coach. We also do some more, and uh, Wanyama is also going to move away from Celtic. Uh, that's uh, news uh, coming in. Uh, Victor Wanyama has revealed that he's talking to the, some Premier League clubs about a potential summer move, and uh, he's been tipped to join um, Arsenal. So uh, the player will leave uh, Scotland, uh, hopefully at the start of the season, and will join another club, uh, hopefully in the English Premier League. And now uh, the news is that Sudan will uh, post uh, a second string side against uh, Zambia. And uh, this will be interesting. You know, uh, Ghana beat Sudan uh, three goals to one in the last qualifier. Sudan beating Lesotho by, uh, sorry, Zambia beating Lesotho by four goals to nil. And now uh, Sudan is going to put up uh, a second string side. Nobody can stop that. It's their own decision. Remember, Sudan is undergoing a rebuilding process for the national team, and they don't really have anything to lose if they even lose the game. So uh, it surely will go down to the wire, and many will be expecting to see what will happen in that game between Ghana and Zambia in September, right here in Ghana. Well, so uh, there is more. We focus on the man, Jose Mourinho, who's finally been unveiled as the manager of the Blues. Uh, Chelsea, he makes another return, and uh, let's see how he will be able to perform. Uh, but uh, we'll go to that story in a bit. Right now, let's take a round of commercials. And when we come back, we see how Moreno was unveiled 
as a coach for Chelsea a second time.